the, the, the funniest thing is, my, my top viewed video of all time is the Ubuntu 1004 Beta 1. Second one being Fedora 13's Beta. It's half the number of views, but it's still, it's, show, it's consistent with DistroWatch. <laughs> No, no, that's the thing. If I wanted to get a bunch of views and stuff, especially regarding Linux stuff, I should just talk about nothing but Ubuntu. I should never mention PC Linux OS. I should mention Ubuntu and Mint and nothing else. And I should I should be the Uber fanboy. I don't want to do that. I'd rather just actually cover the content and people who that appeals to, it appeals to. People that doesn't, well, that's their loss. That's like... <laughs> Uh, anyways. Yeah, I mean, the, the channel, it, they just naturally grow. The more you put into it, the more people tell other people. They just, channels do grow over time. And I, it's like, my, my logic is this will get as big as it'll get, and wherever that number is, whatever that number is, as it passes certain thresholds, I'm willing to invest more of my money and time into it. I, I, I mean, I, my time, is, if I have free time in a week, I'm going to invest it into the community here all. But it's um, like doing full live shows and other stuff. It's going to require me to get a second internet connection, which we were in the middle of talking about here before we kind of unofficially started up. Uh, and it's, um, you know, 500 to 1,000, a, a base community of 500 to 1,000, that, that's 50 bucks? Okay, it's 50 bucks. It's, this is a glorified hobby right now where I'm serving a community and I'm willing to serve it as much as I can. Anyways, we're trying to start Linux episode 24 here. I have some interesting things to talk about. For those who are wondering what YouTube channels and stuff, who people are, James Center Panel here. Um, you, do you even want to give yours out? I gave it out. I'm not sure I should have. You don't really do anything on your YouTube channel is the thing. It, it doesn't really matter, you know. Okay, yes or no. <laughs> Okay, so but we'll, we'll put a link in the description. For those of you who don't know who Jordan is, with all the penguins and <laughs> other stuff behind him, he is This Week in Linux, and this, you know, it's youtube.com slash This Week in Linux. He does a lot of Linux reviews and other stuff like that. Okay, um, before we got started here, James was, apparently people, since I gave out, that's why I was like, do you want to give out your thing? Because since I gave out his thing, people have started asking him questions, which he doesn't mess okay with. <laughs> He's okay with, but <laughs> that's not, um, which brought up a thing, we've decided, uh, I don't know if you want him to message you, Jordan, or you just want him to message here for this stuff over here. We're... F we, we, we've decided we're fine with FAQs, especially about Linux. It's like, if you can't find it in your form, ask it. If one of us know it, we'll be happy to talk about it. Like the one James brought up, somebody was asking, they have 12 gig of RAM, and how do they address that? It's the magic word you want to look for in your form or in your distros packs is a PAE kernel. Um, which, you know, you load that. At most user-friendly distros, Ubuntu supports one, PC Linux support one, because Mint's Ubuntu, Mint supports one. You said uh, OpenSUSE and Arc both do too? Uh, Fedora and I believe Arch does. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's, you load that down, you type in this little one line command, it's a, a little GUI thing, well, you can, you can kill yourself and do it entirely by commands, or you can just pop up the little GUI thing where you check the boxes of what you want, and one of them is 64 gig of support for up to 64 gig of RAM. You can even change how the memory is. I don't really recommend anyone does this unless they know what they're doing. The default allocation for memory in Linux is 1.3 in sets of 4. I, I know you can do 2 gig, 2 gig sets. I've never really seen a benefit to doing that. Do, do you know of one off the top of your head? No. Yeah, it, it, it's... I mean, and while you're in there, if you want, you can remove all the... If you're one of these people who's like, I need that extra 50 kilobytes of space, you can remove all the drivers for all the chipsets that aren't on your particular computer and optimize it a little more. But anyways, that's how you do that. I, it's, I, I honestly recommend you just mess with the settings you, you want to mess with because you can kind of get yourself in trouble messing around with the settings too. That, that's actually one of the cool things about Ubuntu 10.04 and beyond is, uh, I don't know if uh, 9.10 did it or not, but starting with at least 10.04, if you have more than 4 gigs of RAM, it goes ahead and just gives you that PAE kernel. 
Yeah. Uh, as well, and it's uh, there's a number of unofficial projects and most user-friendly distros where uh, somebody will go, oh, just download this ISO over here that's already configured for it. And so it's honestly, though, I recommend everybody configure it at least once just to have a little bit of an appreciation, e even though it's a really geeky and, and uber geeky thing to do. Configuring a kernel using the GUI at least once and then telling it to go back and do stuff, it's not that hard. It's gotten really user friendly and you'll have much more an appreciation for what's going on behind the scenes in your computer. Uh, I don't know if y'all agree that it's, I, I personally don't think it's, it, it's gotten so user friendly. I, it's just one of those things I recommend you do if you're, if you're getting to know Linux. I have a question. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, if this was a PAE kernel, um, if that lets you address more than four gigs of RAM, uh, what is the difference from using that kind of kernel and using 64-bit? Is there any? Uh, well, a PAE is not a 64-bit kernel. Uh, the real... At, at this point, and there's a load of people that disagree with me, simply because... It's, now, this is less of a limitation in Linux and Unix systems. This is more a problem in Windows than it is in Linux and Unix systems. Because at the end of the day, we're all going back to binaries, and for the most part, the 32-bit binaries on Linux run well with a 64-bit kernel, just like they do on a Mac. But... I st I'm still not sure you're really getting any real benefit at this particular point going to a full 64-bit OS, even in Linux. And yeah, there are some minor benefits, but they're really only if you're using really intensive applications like uh, encryption, decryption, uh, video encoding, and I'm talking doing it over long periods of time, because if you're doing it for three or four minutes, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. So, the biggest uh, difference you will see is trying to run Flash and trying to run applications that are not... Yeah, yeah no, th that's the thing. That's part of why I don't recommend doing it because there are still a lot of things like that that everybody uses and Flash is a big one that it, it's you will have compatibility issues. It, like I said, this is more a problem in Windows. I haven't messed around with this enough in Linux to know. You've been doing a lot of distro reviews lately and one of the bugs in Windows, especially with Sun is PDF previews don't work unless you run that outside unsupported flash. Excuse me, that out, excuse me, that outside unsupported patch. It's like they, out of the box, if you download Adobe uh, plugin uh, for reading PDFs in Explorer, you won't get the previews. You have to load a little patch to fix it. I don't think Linux suffers from that because of the way Linux handles 32 versus 64 binaries differently, but I don't honestly know. Have you, like, messed around with that and seen if they'll preview in 32 but one in 64? There's a lot of stuff like that that can be issues. I actually haven't used 64-bit Windows in years. Well, I, I mean on the Linux side. I, I, I know what it does on the Windows oh, side. I cool. haven't messed around with it on the Linux side. I mean, do you still have those those minor glitches like that when it comes to those things on the Linux side, or does it do a good job of compensating for them? Well, as far as the 64-bit, um, my 64-bit machine doesn't have any PDFs on it. Okay. Uh, I'm actually getting ready to, to format it because the flash bug has just been... Flash crashing almost every time I use it is it makes the system unusable for me. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as far as the other thing, I, I don't actually know if I've seen a PDF preview. I don't deal enough with No, because no, like, one of the things on a modern computer, and it doesn't really matter what platform you're on, Linux, Mac, or Windows, the ability to just open a window explorer and just instantly see what the stuff is without having to open it is incredibly useful. The loss of that feature, especially today, it's, it's not, you can't, you can't, it, all of a sudden, you have to go back to working like you did on a computer 10 years ago, and you just can't do it. It's the, the sheer loss of productivity alone is unacceptable. So... So, um... It's the, the difference uh, for if you have uh, how much uh, RAM did you say that 64-bit could address, you guys? Is, 
I think it's... I, well, okay, uh, uh, there is no artificial limitation in Linux that I know of. Uh, I mean, what, what, if they, what if they capped it out in the 64-bit kernels? I haven't actually looked. With a PAE, it's 64 gig. For all I know, it's the same in the 64-bit kernels right now. The actual addressing limitations, I want to say, is around 16 billion. <laughs> it looks like it says 4 petabytes so, on yeah. physical memory. Okay, yeah, so, okay. yeah, it's so, like, it, it's the addressing limitation. It, it's not a small number. It's Let's yeah. put it this way. It's bigger than any system, including most supercomputers, support today. <laughs> right. So, uh, the advantage that you're getting is, is just when you're doing the, it's not really for your RAM and your memory. It's, it's, it's the bigger operations that you're doing. Yeah, right? and, and very few, and like he was saying, like, this is like you're doing rendering uh, massive, like you're doing video editing 24-7. You're doing large computations or, or supercomputer stuff 24-7. In those circumstances, 64 is an improvement right now. For the most of the stuff the average user is doing, the whole 64-bit stuff right now is really a marketing thing to get people on 64 to get us off this catch-22. We'll have Everything will go 64 when everybody's 64, and everybody will go 64 when everything's 64. Which is, I, I, which is why Microsoft is artificially limiting things and, and other things like that. It's, that was the other thing we were talking about before we started. Apparently there is a PAE equivalent plugin that is officially supported by Microsoft to fix the memory limitations. They just don't ever talk about it because they don't want people to... The, the fix Microsoft wants everyone to do is to go to 64-bit Windows and just give up on 32. <laughs> or pay for the different versions of the server OSs. Yeah. Like the, data, the enterprise, the data... Oh, I, I, I would argue that server environments, 64 is probably justified at this point. Mm -hmm. Just because of the the sheer number of computations most servers are doing, even if it's lightweight stuff, collectively it can be enough of a load that there's a benefit to going 64-bit on most servers. Unless it's your, unless you're a small business and it's you and like a hundred people using this box, it's not really getting any load. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, most of it's gimmicky at this point for as far as the end user goes. Right. Uh, that being said, I don't think that's a bad thing. Oh, I, I don't think it's a bad thing, and it's one of those, it, it's, there are some distros that are, you know, kind of dragging their feet and making a full 64-bit version because of that. It, it's not that they aren't working on that project, it's that they're not putting their primary resources into it either, because they realize there's really no need for it at this point. They're like, you know, we're focusing more on making the best distro we can with our limited resources, and we have a 64-bit project going, but we're not really going to put an extreme amount of effort into that until it's really necessary and a benefit to people. 